All right, here's a summary of the Jovian planets. Remember, Jovian means gas giant, so these are the big planets in the solar system. And they include Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus and Neptune, so just these four. There was a previous video that discussed the terrestrial planets, and we'll have an upcoming one talking about the dwarf planets. You should know the order of the terrestrial, plan the terrestrial and the Jovian planets, not only individually, but as a whole system. Okay, so here's a little summary of the Jovian planets. Uh, again, if you're watching this video as a review, you're going to get a little bonus here because you'll get the, uh, the symbols. Here's the symbol for Jupiter. It's like an H with a plus sign on the H. Here's the symbol for Saturn. It's like a 4. <clears throat> here's the symbol for Uranus. It's like an H capital with a little stick and a ball coming down. And here's the one for Neptune. It's like a pitchfork with a little plus sign right there. So there are the symbols. And here's something that's a little bit easier about the Jovian planets and the terrestrial planets. They start, and they're in order of size from big to small. So they're in decreasing order of size. So meaning that Jupiter is the biggest, then Saturn, then Uranus, then Neptune. So it goes biggest down to smallest. If you remember the Jovian, I'm sorry, excuse me, if you remember if you remember the terrestrial planets, they kind of jumped around. It went Earth and Venus and Mars and Mercury. It doesn't follow the order that they go out from the sun in terms of size, but these guys do. One thing to keep in mind is that even though Saturn has the most prominent ring pattern, they all have rings. They all have rings. The terrestrial planets do not, but all the gas guys do. Next thing to keep in mind is that they are all very big. And they also take a very long time to go around the sun. In contrast to the terrestrial planets, these guys have many moons. Let's go ahead and take a look at the special properties of each one. We'll begin with Jupiter. This picture amazes me. Here is Earth compared to Jupiter right here. We are tiny compared to Jupiter. So how does this compare to the sun and the rest of the solar system? Before we get there, know that Jupiter is named after Z Jove, which is Roman for Zeus, who is the king of the gods. And that should be an obvious one because Jupiter is the largest planet. But let's take a look here. Here's the sun. And one thing that we talked about in class is that the Earth is really small. In fact, it would take, if we were to put Earth here, it would be about this big that may even be a little bit too big. And if we were to line up Earth across the sun, this is just Earth. It would take about 109 Earths to go across the face of the sun. Well, let's take a look and see how much bigger Jupiter is. Because here's Jupiter. And if you were to line up Jupiter across the face of the sun, it would line up about nine and a half times. It is so much bigger than Earth. It's unbelievable. You know, this little note down here that a thousand Jupiters would fit inside the sun. A way to think about that, if the sun were a hollow bag, you would fit over a million Earths inside the sun. Jupiter, you'd fit about a thousand in there. So that's just to show you how much bigger Jupiter is compared to the Earth. It's absolutely huge. It's a very, very big planet, and we're pretty tiny comparatively. All right, so what's its special property? It's the Great Red Spot. We talked about this in class, and it was talked about in the projects. Galileo was the first guy to take a look at this 400 years ago when he, when he pointed his telescope up to the sky. He did not discover the planet. The planet's been seen forever. Um, but he was the first guy to see this little storm right here. And here it is right here, this great red spot. Now, they caught a storm-like thing only because there are swirling gases there. Uh, there's no rain coming down or anything like that. It just looks like a hurricane, but it doesn't have any other properties of a hurricane other than that. All right, let's take a look at Saturn. Saturn, the bringer of old age, the god of agriculture. This is actually Jupiter's father, Zeus's father. Again, here's its symbol, the little H with the plus sign going over the top. And here's the Earth compared to Saturn. It's a beautiful planet to take a look at in the sky. Why? Because its special property are its rings. The rings are really easy to see, even with a with a uh, cheap pair of binoculars. If you know that Saturn is going to be up in the sky and you want to see them, you'll be able to see these rings pretty easily in the nighttime sky. 
But one thing to note about the rings, besides being the largest rings uh, ring system in the in the solar system, is that they're really thin. Here's one of Saturn's moons. But the, look at how thin these rings are. They're absolutely tiny. Uh, they're just a few meters thick. They're a couple hundred thousand kilometers wide, but they're just a few meters thick. And most people don't know that about it. When we sent a space probe up there called Cassini, it went around, it looked at Saturn, and then it looked at its rings from an edge-on view, and that's what it found. So even though it, the rings are really wide, they're really thin. What are the rings made out of? Mainly rocks and ice. And what I mean by ice, I don't mean water. I don't mean water ice. What I mean are frozen gases. You've heard of dry ice, which is frozen carbon dioxide. It's really cold up there in space, and there's lots of other gases that are up in space, like ammonia and methane and stuff like that. These gases freeze in space because it's so cold up there. So it's not frozen water ice. It's other gases like methane and ammonia and etc. All right, the next one's going to be Uranus. Uh, the magician, the god of the heavens. Um, I believe, the myth, the myth, if I'm right in my mythology, that this is also Zeus's grandfather or Saturn's father. Um, getting a little bit smaller here. Uh, it's the third largest planet in the solar system. Here's Earth compared to it. Um, I know you can't see it, but it does have rings. And here's its symbol, the, little, the capital H with the stick and the ball coming down here. So what's special about this guy? First of all, it's that it's tilted 90 degrees. It's the only planet that has a 90 degree tilt. And what I mean by that is this, is here's Earth and it has a tilt. It's a little bit off axis by about 23 degrees. Well, here's Uranus. It's completely tilted on its side. So it has this sideways tilt. And what that means is this, is it takes 84 years to go around the sun. And what that effectively means is if there's four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, it has 21 year long seasons. Those are some pretty long seasons. A 21 year summer, a 21 year fall, a 21 year winter, and a 21 year spring. So if the average person lives to be about 80 years old, which season would you want to be born in? And be careful when you answer that question because you got to think about it. You want to be born in summer? That means your first 21 years of life, it's all summer. Next 21 years into your 40s, it's going to be all fall. Then from your 40s to your 60s, or from your 60s, uh, yeah, 40s to 60s, it's going to be winter. And then 60s to 80s until you're dying there, it's going to be in the spring. So it's kind of a kind of a fun question to try to figure out and answer. All right, let's talk about the last one, Neptune. They call it the mystic. It's the fourth largest planet. It's got this pitchfork guy over here for uh, Poseidon's trident. or it's, uh, it's like his little pitchfork that he carried around. What's special about Neptune? got a couple things about it number one it's got the great dark spot just like Jupiter has the great red spot this guy's got the great dark spot and one of the reasons why they call it the magician is ever since this has been observed that great dark spot kind of disappears and reappears every now and again next we have its moon Triton right over here Triton okay a couple cool things about this moon Triton First of all, it's pretty big compared to the size of its planet for the Jovian planets. But next, it's the only moon that's known that instead of going counterclockwise around its planet, it goes clockwise. It's got a clockwise revolution. It's pretty cool. What I mean by that is this, is here's a planet Every moon in the solar system goes around the planet counterclockwise, just like this. However, Triton here, the Triton is the only moon that will follow around and go clockwise like this. It kind of goes backwards compared to all the other moons. I don't know, uh, a lot of people don't know why. It just does it. And again, we have the great dark spot right here that appears and disappears.
All right, so in this video, we talked about the Jovian planets. We talked about how big they are compared to the terrestrial planets, much larger. We said that they are in order of decreasing size as they lie out, of, out from the sun. So Jupiter is the biggest, all the way on down to Neptune, which is the smallest. We went through their symbols and their special properties, the great red spot, the rings. Here we have Uranus tilted on its side, the only planet to be tilted on its side. And here we have the great dark spot and also its moon Triton that goes backwards compared to the rest of the planets. Went over a couple of other things, but if you have any questions about this video, feel free to go back, pause, uh, take the notes as you need them. Uh, again, this was just a review from the project that we did in class. But again, if you have any questions, you can also ask me in class or feel free to Edmodo me.